Well, welcome to this CUBE conversation. I'm John Furrier, your host of the CUBE here in our Palo Alto studio. We've got a great conversation with the CEO of Lacework, David Hatfield, who's in the, on the CUBE remote. David, great to see you guys, a security platform at Lacework. Thank You're you. at the helm as CEO. Uh, welcome to the CUBE conversation. Thank you, John. Great to see you. Congrats to you and the team on all the success. I think what you guys are doing is really important. So uh, happy to be part of it. Great to have you in the community and you know you guys are doing great work. I know, I know about Lacework. Uh, I've done some due diligence on you guys. I love your business model, but for the folks who don't know what you guys do, take a minute to explain who is Lacework, what do you guys do, what's your positioning and what's your focus? Yeah, uh, well, we're a modern data um, security platform for the cloud, you know, and so I think uh, data science meets cloud security, you know, ultimately. Uh, the company's been around since uh, 2015. Um, uh, we received one of the largest financing rounds that we're aware of, I think, uh, in history in the security business, uh, $525 million in January, uh, led by Sutter Hill Ventures, which um, uh, many people may know about. Uh, they founded Pure Storage. Uh, with the notion that you know we're going to go fundamentally change and revamp the ownership model for high-speed data storage using flash versus using spinning disk drives. I spent eight years uh, with that company. Uh, love with what well, we built there. Um, Mike Spicer and Sutter invested in a company called Snowflake Computing. I think everybody's aware of what Snowflake does, which is bringing data warehousing into um, uh, the cloud. And the third big investment that Sutter Hill uh, made is really to help disrupt security, and that's in Lacework. Uh, so um, north of a billion dollar valuation, you know, 300% year over year growth um, and have a, a ton of momentum. Um, so at the core of what we do, you know, you know it's, um, it's really trying to merge. When we look, at, we look at security as a data problem, security and compliance is a data problem. And when you apply that to the cloud, uh, it's a massive data problem. You know, you literally have trillions of, of data points, you know, across shared infrastructure that we, you need to be able to ingest and capture uh, and then you need to be able to process efficiently uh, and provide context back to uh, the end user. Um, and so uh, we approached it very differently than how legacy approaches have been uh, in place. You know, largely rules-based engines that are written to be able to try and stop the bad guys. Um, and um, they miss a lot of things. And so our data-driven approach uh, that we patented is called uh, Polygraph. Uh, it's, uh, it's a security architecture uh, and there are three primary benefits. It does a lot of things, uh, but the three things that we think are most profound. Uh, first is it, it eliminates the need for, you know, dozens of point solutions. Um, I was shocked when I, you know, kind of learned about security. I was at Symantec back in the day and just to see how fragmented this market is. It's one of the biggest markets in tech. Uh, $124 billion in annual spend growing at to $300 billion you know, in the next three years. And it's massively fragmented and the average number of point solutions that customers have to deal with is dozens, like literally 75 uh, is the average number. And so we wanted to take a platform approach to solve this problem um, where the larger the attack service that you put in, the more data that you put into our machine learning algorithms, the smarter that it gets and the higher the efficacy. So uh, eliminating point solutions is, is value proposition one. Uh, point two uh, is that we have to be 10X better than everybody else in the business. Otherwise emerging companies don't get a breakout and become long enduring companies. And so there's a number of different dimensions. The, the, the first dimension that I think is probably the most important is efficacy, you know, in uh, anomaly detection or in, you know, uh, threat detection where you're trying to identify what risks we have in the business, uh, it's, it's generally a very noisy activity. Uh, and so rules-based approaches on average will produce a hundred alerts to R1 or two. So, so the signal to noise ratio, you know, is, is, you know, is a massive hundred you know, X, but call it 10 X uh, reduction. And so we're actually delivering the needle versus the haystack um, for security administrators and dev developers to actually solve the problem. Um, uh, so uh, it's 10 X higher efficacy, it's 10 X faster to be able to resolve the problems. And obviously the ROI is, is a no brainer because you're eliminating all these point solutions and having to manage it. Uh, and the third, and probably the thing that I'm most excited about what we're doing and what our customers are already realizing is that we're transforming security and compliance teams uh, from kind of compliance uh, into business enablers. Um, you know, when you automate 
all of these processes and you build it into you know, uh, the CI CD platforms for the developers, you actually enable the developers to write code to differentiate their business, you know, to create new customer experiences, to get competitive advantage and, and drive revenue for their businesses. And, um, and you know, that's not what security has done up until this point. I mean, oftentimes they're the ones, we're the ones having to say no you know, or slow down or it's too risky, et cetera. But when you automate that and you increase the efficacy, um, you can enable um, the developers to do their thing. Uh, and it allows the CISOs and allows the security professionals to uplevel their responsibility into selling uh, and driving revenue. Uh, and that is increasingly going to become more and more important uh, for supply chains and partners of these cloud native businesses of how secure am I working with you, et cetera. And so we think that that transformation of the role um, of security uh, is going to be as as meaningful as the technology that we're providing to the business. So we're super excited about it. I mean, I could tell you have so much going on. This investment team, Sutter Hill, you mentioned big time players, huge success tracker. Just saw them written up in the Wall Street Journal as one of the best venture capital firms and returns. Just that the bets are all coming home, but their bet strategy is simple. Disrupt in the market that's growing and changing. Um, Pure Storage, you mentioned, the company you worked for, you know, people were saying, oh, they'll never get escape velocity. They disrupted an existing boring storage market, changed the game there. Um, yeah. Security, ripe for change. A lot of tools. A lot of people have buying tools off the shelf, you know, and everyone fighting for the platform. That seems to be the conversation. So I have to ask you, you guys want to be the pl that, that platform. You are that platform. What's different in this platform war? Everyone's trying to be a security platform. What makes you different? Yeah, so I mean, I think the platform wars, you know, are are clearly, you know, upon us. You know, I think what's different about our approach is that we were built on the cloud, you know, for the cloud. You know, so we're uh, a cloud native business that you know runs our business on AWS, uh, and uh, everything that we do, we don't have hardware, we don't own data centers, you know, we don't have any of the legacy uh, elements that are there. Uh, you know, we use software run on the cloud to enable this. So uh, that's point number one. Point number two is we did the hard work of mapping um, the data elements that are out there and ingesting them uh, in uh, and then have this polygraph, you know, behavioral anomaly detection, you know, that is, it can be applied to, today it's being applied to vulnerability and discovery management and containers and Kubernetes. But over time, we believe it extends very naturally um, to a larger part of the attack server. So we don't have to rewrite um, the data engine to develop solutions across broader attack services. Uh, we already have that, you know, so I think our time to develop uh, and innovate uh, will be profound. And I think the third thing that we're seeing companies do um, and largely the legacy bigger companies is that they're just acquiring their way there. And, you know, it's very, very difficult um, to acquire eight to 10 to 20 to 30 companies, um, 30 different CTOs, 30 different code bases uh, and try and integrate them to provide a delightful customer experience. And, you know, the parallels, you know, in the storage business are, are, are you know, pretty similar actually, you know, Dell bought EMC, EMC about a hundred companies. And, you know, we went after a platform approach to be able to go attack them with a unified file system uh, and, a, and a unified customer experience um, that was native uh, for the media that we were working with. We're doing the same playbook here, um, you know, which is you have to have the hard work of, of the foundation elements in place to be cloud native to deliver great outcomes, great efficacy, and, and a really great customer experience. So when we get head to head with any of these point companies that are out and trying to solve something for containers or Kubernetes or just vulnerability discovery and management, et cetera, or we're competing with the legacy uh, companies that have you know, a hodgepodge of acquisitions that they're trying to pull together, we win north of 95% of the time. You know, our POC win rates um, uh, are phenomenal, better than anything I've ever seen. Uh, we had some pretty good ones appear too. Um, and, you know, the, the product and the experience and the efficacy kind of stand on their own once we're in those fights. So uh, part of why we enjoy working with AWS and are really focused on building the partnership together um, is that it creates awareness uh, of what could be and what possibilities and all we want is a shot. And, um, you know, our approach is such that you can be up and running in minutes, uh, you know, and uh, every single one of our customers does a POC. So we'll stand behind our technology um, as our real differentiator um, compared to anybody else that's out there. Great, you guys had great traction going on with the company. Um, certainly saw the investment news that you mentioned earlier at the top. Why did you come on as CEO and when did you come on and join uh, the team? And what was the reason? What, what, what uh, attracted you to join as the CEO of Lacework? 
Well, I've been involved in the company for since the beginning, actually. I, I invested in the uh, early rounds, uh, participated on the board, uh, and have always bought into this, the, the thesis that, um, that security is fundamentally a data problem. Um, and if we can get the data problem and the data processing right, um, you know, you can fundamentally change uh, the industry, um, but you need to have a major inflection. And that inflection is people moving to the cloud. Uh, and we all have seen it during the pandemic, you know, things are accelerating. AWS just did their earnings yesterday. I think they increased their uh, top line guidance from 46 billion to 56 billion this year. I mean, it's a machine that is continuing to move forward. They have 30% market share. Azure's uh, investing at 20%, GCP still investing. People are moving their businesses online aggressively. And as they shift um, to the cloud, uh, the rules-based approach just doesn't work. It doesn't scale. And so a new approach needs to be done. And so by, by being cloud native and best of breed um, and solving the thorny problem of this data processing problem uh, first, um, you know, it gives us an opportunity to use that to then extend and build a business you know, uh, at an enduring level for over the next 10 to 20 years. And um, that's Sutter's model, that's their playbook. They don't invest in 400 companies and kind of spray and pray, which is what most venture yeah. funds do. And I, I love them, they're great. We appreciate the investment in tech, uh, but Sutter's uh, focus is find a really big market, um, find a catalyst for change. In our case, it's moving to the cloud and then build a modern approach, you know, that is 10X better in every dimension. And that attracted to me, I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's one of the biggest markets in tech. And it's one of the most important things that we can do is a digital business is to ensure that we're secure and we're safe. And the threats are becoming um, uh, much more um, uh, skilled, uh, much more deliberate, um, uh, much better funded. Uh, and so uh, the importance for us to ensure that company security posture is really tight um, is, is increasingly critical. So the combination of those factors, and then as I dove back into it and talked to a bunch of customers and talked to partners and seeing the outcomes and the enthusiasm that they had, and the, the team is phenomenal. And so talking to them and I just kind of got energized uh, by the opportunity to go build a really important company that really delivers great outcomes. So I'm having a ball, great to be back into it. Yeah, it's great to have leadership that has experience that you have um, and go to the next level because this is classic next level when you talk about Amazon's earnings and cloud scale and hybrid and edge right around the corner uh, at scale as well. So you started to see that transformation really hit the tipping point, which is changing the landscape on the developer side, which I think is super valuable. And I think you hit that. You mentioned core um, problem. You guys look at that through the lens of data problem. How mm -hmm. does this trend of everything going hybrid and soon to be you know, edge, core to edge, um, mm -hmm. impact your business? Is it a tailwind? Um, how do you see you capturing that next level of scale from a business perspective for lease work? Well, I think the, the trend, you know, from core to edge, you know, uh, hybrid and, you know, ultimately cloud a hundred percent, you know, there, you know, the, we've started with the cloud native businesses. Like, you know, we've been focusing on those companies that are already there, you know, and so now we're, we just had uh, finished a phenomenal record breaking uh, Q1 and, you know, uh, multiple seven figure deals, you know, with very complex global environments where they do have a hybrid environment and they are leveraging uh, the edge. Um, and we're perfect for that. You know, I mean, I, as you think about uh, what we deliver in its most simplistic context, you know, we're effectively delivering a security solution from container to control plane, right? You know, we want to be able to have a granular understanding and operate at this trillions of data points coming in and those can be collected in the core, they can be collected on prem, they can be collected in the cloud. Ultimately they need to be uh, collected and then um, contextualized. Uh, so, um, you know, and this is where our behavioral polygraph technology, you know, transitions data, you know, into information that's useful via the polygraph. Uh, and so we think that, you know, uh, the complexity that's added with environments that are hybrid, environments that are leveraging the edge, environments that are leveraging the cloud native, all need a control plane, you know, to, to run across that to deliver efficacy, um, uh, you know, for our customers. And, you know, we work with, uh, you know, AWS has their own security tools, uh, you know, Azure has some security tools, GCP has security tools, uh, but ultimately, you know, our, our challenge and opportunity is to be best of breed, to deliver incremental value on top of that, and then horizontal value across it, you know, so customers have choice, but they know that their security posture is, is, is secure. Um, and so we, we see it as a tailwind uh, for our business as we go forward. I always said the companies that have the horizontal scalability with cloud and then have that vertical 
AI kind of vibe where you can get in the context of the data is going to yeah. win it all. And I think that you guys have a great solution potentially there. I want to get more information. If you don't mind double clicking on that with me, this is kind mm. of a different take on cloud security because you got the scalability, which gives you the observation space. And then you got mm. to get the context to get the right patterns or uh, whatever magic you guys have in the, in the secret sauce. But yeah. you're doing that on top of massive exponential velocity. Yeah. Where's that secret sauce? Is it in the compute? Is it in the software? What's different about what you guys have in security? To give us a- it's all, in the, it's all in the software. Ultimately, you know, it's the intelligence of how you capture it, uh, how you ingest it, uh, how, you, how you process it, um, but then ultimately how you, how you contextualize it and then how you apply it to different problems, you know? And so the attack surface area and security is a very broad, that's why there's so many point solutions that are out there. And so um, the breadth of solutions, you know, we just want to continue to add solutions and capabilities on top of this polygraph security architecture that allows for the same kind of simple experience, the same kind of 10X value proposition, um, um, but, but, but wider. Um, and so we can eliminate more and more of those, of those uh, point solutions. So, you know, you know our, our thinking on it um, is that, you know, we can participate once we have a customer, you know, the land and expand motion of what we have, we want to make it really, really frictionless for customers to try our technology. And so that's why we do POCs. That's why it only takes a couple of minutes and you can do it for just Kubernetes or just containers or just vulnerability discovery and management, like wherever your specific pain point is, we want to help identify what that is, um, you know, uh, give you a chance to try it. And then once we prove ourselves, it's very easy to extend that um, across the board. So we get natural growth and velocity from people moving the cloud and just, you know, more usage um, of, of compute and storage and sort of, you know, uh, et cetera, but breadth of actually the security uh, or uh, posture or, or attack servers that they have as well. So, you know, so I think we have an opportunity to benefit uh, from, uh, from both the depth and the breadth, uh, you know, but the value that we're delivering is ultimately the software that we're running on top of the infrastructure. And you mentioned observability, you know, there's a number of companies that are leveraging the data and insights collected in different ways um, uh, to converge security and, and observability over time. And, uh, you know, we see that, you know, that ultimately there's a very, very big security company that needs to be built that really is best of breed. Um, uh, but the data and the insights that we're providing to our primary customer, which is really DevOps, I mean, it's really the, the development communities and the builders or who we're changing uh, security for and enabling um, in addition to the security teams, um, you know, we think that we're going to continue to drive software that adds value on that data set and it can be applied to multiple problems in the future. So today, security is a massive market. We're going to focus there, but it does, it does extend pretty naturally into other markets. It's a hot market. Security, everyone needs to have the latest and greatest and also it has to be effective. I got to ask you um, specifically around startup transition to a rapidly growing company to now you're going to the next level where you're starting to having to get into some serious, big, complex enterprise go to market sales motions. Um, so what's in it for the customer? What's the, what's the pain point? What's the customer orientation? What are you um, marketing into as a solution? Is it um, the developer? Is it the CISO? Is it the CXO? What's in it for the enterprise? Why lace work? Why are they engaging? You guys get record numbers. What's, the, what's in it for them? What's the, if I'm the customer, what's in it for me? Ultimately efficacy, which is your security posture, is it goes up uh, significantly. Simplicity, which is, makes it easier uh, for you to do your other jobs. You know, not have to, you know, look for those needles in a haystack and ROI, you know, which is, it's just compelling, you know, um, and much, much more efficient um, than what, what you're doing today. So that, that's a pretty universal value proposition. It applies to cloud native businesses that are high growth. It applies to government agencies. Uh, it applies to uh, large complex enterprises. Uh, we have a wonderful kind of go to market motion right now. Uh, I think Andy Byron and the team who've been here uh, have really done a wonderful job of really making the customer buying experience and the journey really efficient, um, uh, you know, uh, and help them uh, quantify the impact you know, and the risk and then deliver value. And I think, um, you know, that 
that applies in sort of the commercial mid-market uh, and cloud native space. Uh, and like I mentioned, we had, you know, uh, a number of deals in the quarter that were seven figure deals, you know, in very complex organizations with massive demands. Um, and, you know, uh, it ultimately selling is a team sport. And, you know, and so having the process and the rigor that's there, fine tuning that to make sure you have the people uh, and the partnerships, um, you know, that deliver solutions in the way that customers want to buy them. Uh, and then ultimately uh, deliver a value proposition that is just unquestionably better. And I think we have all of those elements, you know, we'll be entering the, the large enterprise very aggressively in the, in the quarters to come. I, that's where I've come from, you know, you know, yeah. running multi-tooled, you know, kind of go to market engines where you've got mid-market, you know, commercial enterprise, large enterprise government across uh, all geographies um, is, uh, is really fun to expand. And, uh, you know, we're, we're hiring uh, as fast as we can maintain quality, uh, you know, and so we're out of that startup phase now and entering into real scale. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that, you know, in the AWS marketplace, I think we're the number one startup vendor. Uh, if I, if I got my facts right, you know, for, uh, for private offers, you know, we're, the, you know, one of the top security players and top 50 ISVs in the marketplace overall. Um, and so in order for us to get the motion, we need to make sure that we're delivering our value in the context of how companies want to buy it and people want to use AWS credits, uh, you know, to apply to their solutions. And so it's really important for us um, to make that frictionless buying experience uh, occur. And so uh, we're excited about it. I think we've got a really nice start um, and um, yeah. it's the fun part of building companies, uh, you know, which is how do you tune things to make sure you're making it really, really easy for the market to absorb your technology. And then once you're there, you know, delight the hell out of them and just make sure that, you know, that there's, that they're excited and our, our net retention rates are the best I've seen uh, in the marketplace. Our net promoter scores, you know, are in the high 50s, low 60s, which, uh, which is fantastic in this space. I think it's best in class by an order of magnitude. Um, some players, big sim players that are out there, you know, have a customer in net promoter score of four. I'm like, you know, that means 96% of the people or 96 votes says they wouldn't recommend the solution to their to their peers. So, um, you know, at Pure, we got this at scale. So um, from 70 to in the into the low 80s. Uh, I think we have the opportunity to do the same thing here. So, you know, combination of tailoring the motion that we have, making it really easy for the buyer to buy what they want, with whom they want, from whom they want, um, uh, you know, and then just creating a value proposition that is a no brainer is, is I think the secret recipe. It's if anything, it's interesting, you know, you're um, so much experience in the enterprise and, and tech with cloud native, you're basically laying out the success formula, which is, if you have a value proposition, you should be able to get it in quickly. You don't need the top down, you know, win everything. You can have a value proposition that can be enabled for usage and then grow yeah. rapidly when it's successful. Yeah. And that's cloud, yeah. that's the cloud business model. So it's not so much about organic versus this, it's really what the preferred motion is. It's speed, you know, and I think developers in particular, it's why the cloud happened, right? IT wasn't delivering yeah. services uh, in, in the speed and the efficacy that, 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 the, that the developers wanted. And so in order to appeal to the developer community, um, you know, you need to deliver something that's frictionless and easy um, and fits into JIRA and fits into their workflow processes and uh, speaks their language. And so we built our platform and our solutions for builders because that's where the money is. That's where the pain point is. Um, and that's, and they want to build secure code. They just don't want to be told no. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, we want to automate that process and make code um, um, secure uh, and do that, you know, in the build phase and then do it in the runtime. And then across the CICD, you know, pipeline, we want to continuously be adding value across that. And, uh, and uh, the developers, you know, candidly, when Pure bought the solution, you know, many years ago when I introduced him to the company, um, you know, it was it was the general manager of our software business unit that bought it, not the security team. And I think that's a trend that is continuing that we're going to focus on. Well, a lot of people realize that security and compliance and automation kind of all go together where you don't want to disrupt developers to kind of engineer something just to do an integration, for instance. So there's yeah. a real business model impact that you're hitting on here that's not just a technical solution, it's really how the business is operating. And I think that to mm -hmm. me is super interesting use case. Um, what's your reaction to that? You see this as a, as a, as a success? No, it's a, that's, that was, that's that third part that I was talking about, you know, which is that's most exciting is that, this, you know, people are calling shift left, right? You know, so moving, you know, security into the development pipeline as it's happening um, um, and in integrating security architects as value added into the development organizations themselves and leveraging automated machine learning tools like ours to be able to simplify and automate the process uh, versus, 
slowing it down. So we think that shift left is, is super exciting uh, and, and will continue. And we actually think we're the leaders in that space and want to continue to be the leaders in that right. space. Congratulations, great insight. Awesome to have you on and, and to hear from your experience and also the great uh, venture that you're scaling up and to the next level. Lace work, uh, David, thanks for coming on. So I'll give you the last minute to close us out. Give us a quick plug for the company, Vitals, what you're working on now, what you're looking for, you're obviously hiring. Um, give a quick plug for Lace Work. What, you, what are you working on? So number one, uh, we love our partnership with AWS. And so we're going to continue to invest uh, invest there too. The business is growing north of 300% year over year. That means that we've got record banking growth and lots of hiring. So we're hiring across uh, all functions. Uh, and three, um, give us an opportunity. You know, I, I think that you, know, you can fundamentally uh, we want to be the bar in which you define all other security companies, and all other technology companies. So it's a high bar. Um, we want to make it frictionless, frictionless to try. Give us a shot, uh, give us some feedback. Uh, and I'm grateful and privileged to be part of this, this wonderful team. So look forward to spending more time with you, John, in the future. Man, looking forward to a lot, lot to talk about. David Hatfield, CEO of Lacework, great company, scaling up again, another success story in cloud, cloud native. As COVID comes to a close, if you will, for this phase and people get back to real life, the scale of cloud is going to be leading it and uh, new technology is going to be powering it. Uh, this is theCUBE Conversation. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching.